Hi friends, this is Barb Pask. I'm going to try to paint something again for you tonight. I, uh, over the years, have collected a lot of props. For a while I joked that I had a prop addiction. Um, I've gotten rid of a lot of things over the years. Oh God, I was really into teapots for a while. I still have a big collection of those. Uh, I purchased this, let me show you what I bought off eBay. Pretty excited about it. Hard to see, let's see if I tilt you down. A marionette, Pinocchio. Pretty cute, isn't he? I guess he's carved, he's solid wood. He's about uh, 22 inches tall. The strings were all hooked together. My husband kind of helped me straighten it out and we hung it like that. I'm thinking I'm gonna paint it horizontal, so I, I tried different positions. I did paint him last night, let me show you, see? Set him on the edge and painted him, kind of a trial run. And now I've moved him around, we're gonna try this. Got some big eyes. Tried to set him so he's not, uh, you know, too foreshortened, so there's legs coming at me and stuff. I'm gonna do it on an eight by 10. How's that? Let's see. Okay. Oops, come back here. Okay, this is a, a hard panel. I buy these off of Dick Blick. They are a gessoed hardboard panel and I put a um, couple more coats on there. Let me kind of square that up. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I am an oil painter. I use water mixable oils. I did it to get away from the medium, the solvent, because I paint a lot. And uh, these are oils. Paint like oils, dry like oils, but they're water cleanup. I've been real pleased with the transition. Um, if you are doing acrylics because you're afraid of the oils, this is something to consider maybe. I do use, I think, good quality ones, which I think make a difference. These are Cobra mostly and Duo. They're not all the same and I've had people complain they felt sticky and and again I think uh, the quality of them has a lot to do with it. And they do make mediums for these. I don't, I've tried mediums and I I use them pretty much straight from the tube or I dip a, a little water, you know, get my brush damp a little bit and I work that way with them. So. Um, Let's try to sketch. I did pre-mix some colors tonight because I'd like not to play with him a lot. I'd like some clean colors. So um, we'll see how that goes. I normally use my view catcher. I don't know if you have one of these or not. You set it to your size canvas. For example, that's an 8 by 10. You decide if you're going vertical or horizontal. I also have this which is made by EZL, has the grid on it, obviously, and this came with a, a little marker. It came with this. It has a little um, eraser on the end. It's like a dry erase board, like um, say you were drawing an angle of a roof on there. Let's cap him up, and then it, it comes off. Neat tool. I haven't used it enough or a lot, um, but it's. I'm a plein air painter too. If you paint outside, it's handy to judge maybe the depth of a building because sometimes it's difficult to judge how far back in the distance a side goes, or to get an angle of a roof. The tricky thing in using is is keeping your hand really, really still. That's what I. You almost need to, you know, prop your hand someplace steady to use it because if you move, you know, that much, everything moves. So that's what I found to be tricky about it. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to sketch Pinocchio on there. I'm just going to use it as a guideline to get my drawing on here. And I could draw the grid on here and that would help too. But we're going to try it this way without it. And uh, all right, let's get going here. I'm just mixing up a a dark, blue and some red, just it doesn't really matter because I just want to get him sketched on and we'll look through this. 
Again, I'm going horizontal because of the way his legs are. I like that format. And I want to think about placement, too. I mean, do I want his head dead center? Normally, I wouldn't do that. Let's think about if we were to run maybe even the one foot off the canvas, and then we'd have more negative space in front of him. Do I like that better? I think I do. So we could even run the feather of his hat off. Okay, so about a third down, I'm looking, try not to move it, which is again the tricky thing. That's about where his nose is hidden. His foot's obviously all the way down here. This is just kind of a guess right now. Kind of get a general idea of where he goes and uh, go from there. And then we'll get somewhat of a better sketch on. All right, let's try to sketch him on. He's got a really big head. That, <laughs> like I said, we kind of untangled him, and then my husband helped me set him up. We had to hang him to get that head to keep from flopping around. And I think he's cute, and like I said, I painted him last night. I debated about streaming it, um, but we're doing it tonight, right? I'll be painting him again may not interest you to watch me paint him over and over, but uh, he's got a big head, great big eyes. red, I guess that's his mouth down in there. Somebody's version of Pinocchio, you know, not Disney's version. If you're an artist like me and the, like to do still lifes, it's exciting for me when I get a new prop, something I'm excited to paint. I know how some people specialize on one thing. They only paint landscapes or they only paint still lives or I've never done that because I like to paint so many things. I don't know if that's bad or good. It's what it is, you know. wonder about this. Did some individual carve it? Be nice to know the history on it, wouldn't it? I 
have seen videos on these where, um, actually I think on YouTube, where people perform with these marionettes and boy, some people are amazing with them. They move them around like they're, they're alive. <laughs> Street performers. look at him and see what we think before we get started here. You know, and I'll probably, you know, put in some of these strings that we see. There's one, I don't know that I'll put that in, coming right across his nose. And to kind of make sure the drawing looks about right before I take off. I did struggle with it last night. I, uh, I just didn't have his head big enough. And then he's got a shadow, of course, under his leg and under this leg and out here and all back in here and he's sitting on a fabric like that all right how's that look I know he's kind of this feels strange but that's how he's made I think what we'll do, we'll start off and with our darkest darks. The brushes I'm using are um, Rosemary and Company. These are the Evergreen series, which are a soft brush. And I'm just mixing up a dark, ultramarine blue, um, transparent red oxide. I use a limited palette mostly. I use, uh, I'll tell you what's on here. Ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cad yellow medium, lemon, cad lemon, uh, crimson, lizard crimson, cad red light, and white. And I do add transparent red oxide and Indian yellow. And those are both transparent colors. When you mix Indian yellow with uh, ultramarine, you get a very nice transparent dark green. I like that a lot. So, you know, every now and then something a little different, but that's, that's mostly it. So let's start off and um, block in the darks that we see. Like I said, I'd like to, uh, my goals here is, you know, of course, get him as accurately as possible. And I'd like um, not to, I'd like him to be painterly. Even though, of course, he's pretty hard edged. I'd like not to play and play and play with things if I can do that. Easy said sometimes, isn't it? Hard as you try sometimes, you know, you don't get your drawing right and then you're adjusting. I say I've pre-mixed a lot of these colors, but not all of them. He's got a weird uh, skin tone, very yellow-orange. Feather on his cap. I 
I don't, I don't pre-mix often. Um, once in a while, I was doing it pretty, for a while there, I was doing it quite a bit. I kind of like what well, speeds things up and uh, it's kind of nice to sit there and just pre-mix colors and really study your colors too. And then the actual part of painting is a lot quicker, of course. Just another thing to try. I never do everything the same. Red too, but very bright on the edge there. And I want to stay loose. That's, again, one of my goals. Don't make anything too precious. Okay. Jumping around a bit here, aren't I? Didn't get the vest. Locked in with black too. If you live in the Cincinnati area, I'll be at uh, Northminster Presbyterian uh, Presbyterian Church Saturday on Compton Road at the Northminster Fine Art Fair. Very nice show, very well run. It's in um, three different parts of the church. Always worry about the weather every year this time of the year, but it's looking good. It's looking like just rain on Saturday. So come on by if you live in the area. And no idea where I'll be till I get there and check in. It's uh, down the basement, it's in the, there's a little chapel, and then there's a main room that you come into, and they move you every year. They're smart to do that too, you know, people don't, you can't request the same spots, so. Even though the shoe is black, it's uh, there's some different values in it, so I'm looking for that. And again, let's try to keep these edges loose. You know, when you uh, and there's some highlights here that will help explain things too when we get further along. That's part of the reason I don't do a real precise drawing either. If you get a very precise drawing on here, then you're like filling in the lines. And I don't want to do that. Like I said, I want to try to be loose. All right, let's paint in those shorts. See, we're moving pretty quick because I pre-mix color because that takes so much time up. Okay, this is a little low. I'm trying to look how it is in relation to this, you know. The leg goes up.
going to warm that up a little bit. It's getting a lot of light. I've done things they call like a one-stroke challenge where you um, you can even do it like with an apple, a simple object and you look at the apple and you try to pick the color and value that's right in this, say, this side of the apple and you lay down a stroke and you leave it alone. And that's the goal is to not keep picking at it, you know, get it right the first time. And even, I have even done that, and you, you know, you wipe it off if you don't get it right the first time. There are people you can tell paint like that. There's an artist here in Cincinnati that I'm friends with, and uh, her color, that's how she paints. You can just tell her colors are fresh and clean. Her paintings are very painterly. Um, I did a show with her. A plein air competition and she won and you know I think because the judges appreciate they can see in her work that she's not playing around with it I say it's not everybody's taste because it's very painterly but I think as an artist we appreciate it even more there's always a lot of paint on her canvas and you can see her brush strokes and the colors are nice yeah, she just doesn't play around with it a lot, and uh, it really works for her. All right, let's keep moving here. Kind of just jumping all around on him, which I think is fine to do. a blue band that runs around there that will add on. These colors are pretty intense, which you would expect that with a child's toy. A lot of times a lot of primary colors are used in children's toys. Give a shadow over here. See if that works later on. Bring that shadow back. That's from his head. Like I, said, I suppose this is his mouth down here. I 
I'll have a link to my website in the description box if you want to check out more of my work. That's a shadow there. And we're using a pretty big brush, which is good and bad. Should keep us looser. Now his nose is very bright, pure red on the tip and more shadowed on the side. And I'm looking how far out, like when you stop at his face, how far out before you hit the end of his nose. And we'll just lay it on there bigger than we need because we're going to cut it back. Okay, let's see where we're going from here. I'm going to try to go back to this brush I sketched with and uh, try to lay in the white of his eyes here. There's some blue in there too that we've got to add in. All right, let's lay in some of that flesh color, which I've mixed up a batch of that. Like I said, it's very yellowy. It's more shadowed over here. don't know if I said, but I ordered these panels off of Dick Blick. I did say that. Um, and they are very slick. The only thing I've discovered with them is the brush strokes show pretty bad on them. So um, you, you know, might be helpful to brush down so you don't, even when they're varnished, you still see a lot of that. So I don't know how I feel about that. And then where the light's hitting this is a much cleaner color. If you saw the video where I painted the boots a while back, I uh, just entered those in a competition along with a still life. I was real pleased with the boots. They, um, I have a FASO website, I don't know if you're familiar with that, and uh, they have a monthly competition, Bold Brush I think it's called, and I entered them into that. And the, they took the which I don't understand completely. They notified me they took the top 15%. So I guess that's good. <laughs> uh, anytime somebody recognizes your work and likes it, it feels good. So we'll see if they get in. It's a Cincinnati Women's Art Club show, and it can be tough. They have different judges every year, of course. And the one thing I don't like about it is they. Uh, I feel like it's my opinion that they try to take a variety of mediums and they're so intent on doing that that they don't take the best of the work that's submitted. And it's disappointing when you get rejected and you go see the show and there's work in there that 
you know, you don't feel is as good as your work. Of course, that's my opinion, but. And, you know, and maybe that's the right way to put a show together. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I wouldn't judge that way. I would take the best of the work that was submitted. That's the way I would judge, but not everybody agrees with me. I paint with a gal that worked for North Light Books for years, and uh, she understands it. She said if, they, if she was trying to put an exhibit together, she, she understands why they do it. are looking here. I realize this feels bigger, but we'll work on that when we get when we get there, you know, when we go to putting the background in. We'll cut into it then. I feel like it will maybe be more rounded like that. All right, let's move on. I think that's his mouth down there. And I'll be painting him again. Like I said, I don't know. Let me know if it's something you'd want to watch me paint. If I move him around in different positions or if, you know, if you're not interested in seeing me paint the same thing, let me know that too. But I'll be painting him more. Whether, you, whether I do it on camera or not. get those flesh tones on the legs and the arms. He's got um, hmm. white hands. Almost look like little shells. darker flesh tones where I see them. shadow there from his foot, I think. All right, let's get into that lighter color. Rinse our brush off a little bit. Use the same brush a lot as you can tell. I, um, I don't mind that I intermix the color some.
someone asked me in the last video to share my color mixes and I I try to do that I um, feel like I do you know a lot of times I know as artists you see someone make a color and sometimes we're like ooh how'd you make that but you know there's a lot of ways to arrive there and uh, sometimes there's just a bit of everything in them you know There's a joint here and here. Obviously, I'd like to try to explain a little bit. May have to get a small brush out and do that. bow tie there, I guess. This is just pure cobalt blue, which can be hard to keep clean when you're painting it on top of other colors. I'm going to get that little brush out and see if we can explain these joints a little bit and then um, paint the background in and think about some highlights. All right, let's see here. Got something a little bit darker here. Great brush. Well, let's go ahead and get the background blocked in. And then we'll go back and look at the little guy again and see about developing some things. Looking at that, thinking that feels a little skinny. All right, let's get some shadows in first. I think we'll just take some purple, basically, ultramarine, lizard and crimson, and we'll put some shadows in where we see them.
you know, we're going to want to ground him really well. And then the background comes up right about in there. And then, okay, I'm going to dip this in a little water. I talked about doing that. That's the first time I've done that. But I think shadows should be thinner anyway, more transparent. And it doesn't mean I'll leave this like this up. Probably will not. just going to take uh, ultramarine and my uh, transparent red oxide and some white. Let's see what that looks like for the background. Just trying to keep it, uh, I decided I'd like it gray because the colors that are pure and rich, I'd like them to stand out more, and they always do stand out more with gray. And I did not tone the canvas this time, no particular reason why. Now when I start covering it like this, it would be nice if it, I had toned it. It's just so much easier to cover if you got a bit of color underneath there. do a lot of orange typically, an orange, you know, mixture for my tone, but I've done other colors. I've done pink and all kinds of colors. shape of these things as we paint in the background. But I want soft edges, so I want to keep that in mind. Doesn't hurt to even pull a little bit of it in there. back a little bit. line there either so we'll kind of going to put a little yellow in this warm it up a little bit on this side One of the joys of um, oil paints. You know, this is all still wet and you can blend into it. And all right, let's see, I'm looking at the shape of his head.
feel like his nose could be almost um, a little fatter. Try not to adjust him a lot because I didn't want to get into my collar and muddy him up. Okay, where are we going from here? We'll get the bottom blocked in. going to use some of the colors from the background, but we want it lighter. see a shadow that I missed. Oop, just cut into his leg, didn't I? Um, I missed this shadow on the, from his hand here. There's a shadow there. Goodness, and a shadow there. back into the bottom there, get that blocked in. Try not to have a real defined line between the foreground and the background. A little light back in there.
Let's put a few of the highlights on, and that might help explain some things, too. Um, let's look around. I feel like this is too solid feeling, if you know what I mean. It feels like a an object, kind of. All right, let's get our little brush back out and think about some highlights where we see them. Like on the toe. And on this edge. to squint and uh, look for those little highlights where I see them. I've got that collar pretty white as it is, so not a lot of highlights on his face. I see that one on his nose. Make that indent because I think that's cute. That's how it is. See any others? like the purple in there. I joke about every painting needing purple. Maybe, huh? Okay, I think what we'll do before we call it quits is, oh, got to do a few things here. One is, I um, need a really dark, dark, ultramarine, transparent, red, our usual dark. Think about if there's any places we wanted it like really grounding, you know. Okay. 
Okay. All right, we're going to take, let me see what I did with it here. Someplace I have a little pointy stick that I use sometimes to scratch into things with, and I'm not finding it. All right, we'll work with it. Maybe we'll try the back of the brush. All right, so I've got a piece of hardware here. From here, this goes around and off. I don't think I want to run the one, you know, right across his head. And so there's four strings. One's kind of behind him there. I can't really tell where it goes. I see that one goes from his hand. This one probably goes from the arm. Okay. Oh, and then there's one, of course, running from his head. So if that one runs from his hand, that one runs from his hand. Okay. And I probably will not leave them all scratched in like that. I probably will probably darken some of them. That was my hubby yelling. He doesn't know I'm recording. joints a little better. I think that's a cute thing. Like I said, I may uh, actually darken some of these strings, not leave them like that. Got little eyebrows. And it's black around the eyes. Got some cool light reflecting under there. Back in there. All right, we're going to call it quits here. We've been at an hour and 45 minutes. Really? Nope, an hour. I say, it didn't seem that long. Let me back up and show him to you. There he is. Again, the strings are just scratched in, so we'll decide. And there's our little guy. And let me know, like say if you'd like, I mean, if you're not interested in watching me paint him again, let me know because I'll, I'm going to paint him more. I'll try some different positions and try him again, but I get it if you don't want to see it over and over. <laughs> All right, and I, I won't do it. You know, I'll do something different next time. Have a nice evening. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.